Hello everyone, this is Ali from Tier 1 Coding and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to create a Terms and Conditions section for your website. So all this is is the text, Terms and Conditions, last edit, and then we're going to have a Greetings user. And we're not going to waste our time writing all the text, so we're just going to add a bunch of paragraphs of dummy text. And you see we also have the scrolling here. Then we have I agree and then two buttons, accept and decline. You also see that when we hover over them, they slightly have a less opacity. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right. So inside our HTML, the first thing that we're going to want to do is just create a div for our background. So BG. Now, after that, so after that closing div tag, we'll create the terms box. So, terms dash box. Now, inside of that, we'll create the terms text. So, dot terms dash text. Now, in there, we'll start with the terms and conditions title. So, we'll print h2 and write terms and conditions. Conditions. Now we're gonna add the last edit part of it. So we're gonna oh, we're gonna add a paragraph for this in the last edit. Now I'm just gonna throw in a random date here. So I'll do 1 12 2022. Now we can add the greetings user using another paragraph. So greetings user. And lastly, we can create a bunch of paragraphs for our dummy text. So we'll do lorem around 50. Um, I'm using an extension called Beautify to make it look more clean. And we want a few paragraphs, so we'll take this. First, put it in a paragraph tag. And we'll make about four or five of these. So at the moment, we'll take this one and we'll copy it and we'll paste it a few more times. So one, two, three, and four. Now, if we go ahead and run our code, we see that we have all of our paragraphs, the text, all the text that we have just added. Now we can create the I agree section. So just if I format this, um, under, under inside the text still, we're going to add a H4, so heading four, and we're gonna write, I agree to the and then a span element so so the reason we want a span element um so inside of that we're going to have the continuous text so terms and conditions so as you saw from the example at the beginning of the video the terms and conditions we want to be highlighted so for that we will be changing the color specifically that text so then after the span element and I read the privacy notice or you can change the text to something else so now we're gonna go ahead and add the buttons so we'll go ahead and add dot buttons and inside of that create a button and then give that a class so we'll give it btn and then red button now for the first button text we're gonna have accept and then the second one we're gonna want for decline so go ahead copy this button paste it instead of red button we want this button to be gray so we'll change it to gray button and instead of accept, we'll change this to decline. 
So now we have the I agree. So that we won't have our we won't have the coloring yet because that will be done using CSS. So we can get started with that now, but first we have to link it to our CSS. So go here at the head tag, add the link tag and link to style.css. Now if you haven't already, you can go ahead and create a style.css over here. And then I've created mine, so you can go to our CSS and start with that. So we're going to start by customizing our body. So we're going to add body. We're going to just de remove the default margin and padding. So margin zero. And also padding, set that to zero. Now we're going to add a min height of 100 viewport heights, which is the entire height of our screen. Now we want everything to be center line, so we can use Flexbox for that. So display as flex. We're gonna align line items in center and also justify the content in the center. Now for our background image, so we're just gonna go ahead and do dot bg first. And we do background URL, and then we can go ahead and actually get our image. So for that, we can go to unsplash.com and the one I'm going to be using is like clouds. So I'll search clouds and I like the second one over here. So we download it and put it into the folder of which we've created our index.html and style.css. So I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick. So now if I look over here, we see we have our image. So if you want, you can rename your image. For now, I'm just going to leave it. So I'll go ahead and quickly put in the URL. Uh, there we have it. Now if we go to our document, and we just have to add closing and a semicolon. Alright, so now we're going to set the height to 100 viewport heights and we're going to set the width to 100%. Now we're going to position it as absolute and we want to cover the background, so we'll do background size and set that to cover. Now we see our background is covering and we want to be blurred, so for that we'll do filter blur and we'll set that to around five pixels so now we have our image slightly blurred now because we want our background image to be in the background because that's why it's a background image obviously we're going to set the z index to be negative one so that will push it all the way to the back now i'm also going to add an opacity depending on your image you might not want to use it so 0.7 and I'm going to add a brightness also depending on the image you can choose what you'd like to do so again filter instead of blur we'll be using brightness and we'll set that to 75% and now it's slightly darker now we can create the actual terms box so dot terms dash box we're going to go to max width max width and we'll set that to around 460 pixels now we see everything is condensed in that space and we want to give it a background color so background color i'm going to use rgb i'm going to do 83 and set this to also 83 set the next one also to 83 and we're going to add 0 0.1 here to give it a bunch of transparency. So if I go ahead and remove that, it's very dark. So if I just go ahead and add back to 0 0.1, oops, we have a slightly transparent. Now to change the text color, we'll give a color 
hashtag FFS font family. Um, you can use whatever one you want. I'm going to be using this one here. I'm going to give it a padding. So padding 0 and 20 pixels. Now for the height, I'm going to set the height to 400 pixels and the overflow Y to auto. So what that does is now we can actually have to scroll instead of it being all tall in one. Now we're going to set the front size to 14 pixels so that just makes it slightly smaller. Now we can go into the terms text, so dot terms dash text. So again, we're going to first want to add padding. So padding, we're going to add 0 and 20 pixels again. And then for the height, so let's go ahead and add in a height of around 400-ish pixels. And again, set the overflow Y to auto. Now we can set the font size again to 14 and font weight. We want 500 for that. And we'll set the color to hashtag one one. All right. So now we can change up the scroll bar a little bit. So for that, we're going to do dot terms dash text. And we're going to do webkit dash scroll bar. So we're going to set the width of that to two pixels. And we're going to give it a background color of hashtag 282828. So that's like a grayish color. And now we see we have the grayish color. Now we're not done with that yet. So after that, we're going to do dot terms text again. And again, webkit dash scroll bar dash thumb. Now we're going to set the background color for that to white. So hashtag F1, 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 F1. And now we see we have that part. And if we scroll with it, it looks a lot nicer. Now let's change the heading. So the heading was our bigger text. So for that, we're going to do dot terms dash text and h2. So for that, we'll just want everything to be uppercase. So text transform and set that to uppercase. So now we see the text terms and conditions is in all uppercase. Now for the H4, so dot terms dash text H4. We're going to set the font size to 13 pixels. And we're going to text align. And we're going to set that to center. Now we're also going to add a padding of 0 and 40 pixels. So that's for the stuff at the bottom here that I agree. And then we can customize the span to make part of it a different color. So dot terms dash box h4 because it was inside the h4 and then the span element. So for that we're going to add a color of around reddish. So we're going to do RGB again. So RGB, then we're going to do 245, then we're going to set the next one to 68. So we're going to set this to 68, and again, set the last one to 68. And now we see that part is highlighted in the reddish 
whatever color you want to call it. Okay. And then again, to make it stand out more, we'll make it uppercase. So same thing we did before, text transform it as uppercase. Now it's much more bold and standing out. All right, now for the buttons. So we're just gonna do dot buttons first. We wanna display that as flex once again. Add a padding of zero and 20 pixels. And we're going to justify the content and space between. So another space between and we're going to set the padding, padding bottom to 50 pixels. So that will just give it some space at the bottom over here. Now we'll do dot btn, so dot button. Height of 50 pixels, so that'll make the button taller and the width. We're gonna do calc, and then we're gonna do 50% and six pixels. So now you see they're both equally sized, and this also makes them responsive, so if I was in a responsive view, so if I go ahead and switch to a responsive mode, you can see that the buttons will get smaller and they will both stay the same size. All right, so we're also going to give a no border because we don't want the border. So border, we'll just set that to zero. And we'll set the border radius to about six pixels to round the edges. And we'll make the font size match the size of the button. So font size of 19 pixels. So that's much bigger. And again, we want font weight to 500. Now we want to set the color to hashtag FFF. And we want to transition, so transition. And we're going to set to 0.3 seconds linear. Now we're going to also set the cursor pointer. Now let's do the red button to make the red button red. So that'll also, so as you saw there when we reloaded, we had the transition for the text. So dot red button. And we're gonna set the background color for that. We're gonna do RGB. And we're gonna set to 245. And we're gonna set 68 and 68, as we just did above to match the colors. So 68 and 68. So we have our first button red, and you saw the transition we had there. Now we're gonna just copy this because we want the same thing for a gray button. So we're just gonna change red button to gray button. Now they're both red, so we'll change the color. So for this, we actually don't need to use RGB. We can just use hashtag 282828, where we used the same color we used before. Now we have one red button and one darker button. Now you saw from the example that when we hover over it, it'll have slightly less opacity. So dot button and we'll use hover. So hover and for that all we have to do is change the opacity. So opacity 0.6. So when we hover over one of the buttons, you see the opacity is slightly less. So that's actually all there is to it. We've made it responsive. We added the text, changed the color, basically added everything. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing as it would really help me out a ton.